ఐక్యంగా this kind of presentation i don't like zoom presentations <laughs> yeah, i feel i don't know <laughs> and then once you start we all go yeah i cannot see and you, yeah and anything. you feel like you're presenting to no one right i cannot see your faces names and just the first screen i think, I think it's much better in person i probably need to think about something like that <laughs> soon and now now feels like everybody's in in office yes i exactly okay बहुत लोग रिश्ते भेज रहे हैं मगर मैं तुम्हें भेज नहीं रहा है क्योंकि तुम तुरंत मना कर दो हर चीज को पहले सोच लो मॉर्निंग एवरीबॉडी आई सी मॉर्निंग एज वी स्पीक I have just one general announcement and that is uh we have lined up our speakers for our symposium uh next spring and we've got several uh really astounding folks uh we've put together what we think is another exciting symposium this one focused on uh neuroinflammation and immune uh role and immune and the role of immunity in ADRD um so when we have people speaking on the gamut of related topics from very basic science to therapy so stay tuned for uh the announcement of the um symposium which probably won't come out until after the holidays but uh we got uh pretty on top of things this year um all right well without saying anything else i'm going to turn over the uh mic so to speak to our distinguished speaker for today's arc meeting uh who is uh dr byunga jun Thank so, you. Very nice introduction, Lindsay. <laughs> oh, they 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 pay me a lot for that. <laughs> okay, so today I have a little bit different for me because I used to just to present one research, ongoing research, but I haven't. We haven't actually overview what we've done before. and what we've done current and potential what we want to do in future specifically apple research and linji and i really focus on this area because uh, also very interesting protective mechanism so today bear with me it's it's more like our kind of review of our research in ongoing research and previous and then you can actually see through what we thinking and related the apple research and please interrupt me this is more like a kind of our own uh menus our own publication review uh for say so so i will just focus on our published uh data and then just the couple of uh, slide to show the what's the findings and then give some ideas and if you want to know the details please let me know and i'm not going to cover all the details but just to give some ideas what we've done and then also what we are interested in so the uh, i'm trying to focus on apoe itself apoe uh, alios e2 e4 e3 what's the impact on ad and then the uh what apoe genotype dependent risk profile based on the uh, uh transcriptome matchlom and the genetic profiles 
and then just the one quick overview and what we are thinking in future direction. And so this is the uh, most recent I can find in the overview of all the dementia in the world. And, and it seems like uh, uh, North American, this is population over age. And but trajectory, you see the uh, North American, but especially the South America has a very high rate of uh, uh, dementia. And the other kind of things I notice is uh, some of the Africa, you will see the earlier frequency of uh, FOE, but it seems like uh, uh, not well corresponding what we believe uh, the high uh, prevalence of AD in FOE genotype. For example, this is kind of FOE, everybody knows, and uh, this is the uh, uh, most uh, um, uh, major uh, AD risk gene for late onset AD, and it, it's in chromosome 19. And then the two amino acid acid actually determines isoform. If four is one twelve one fifty eight arginine, and then E three is a heterozygote. It E two yeah, is God. yeah. Go ahead. Isn't it? Is it possible that you know in Africa people die of lots of different things? Is it possible that boy is protective against? I mean something. Yeah. Something, and that's why it's so prevalent. But what about African American? So you see the uh... no African Americans are have so much Caucasian in them. It's it's very different. Yeah, so I'm always curious. We may need to really African African and African American actually apply uh, effect size comparison. But you see the Oceania, they are. They are pretty uh, high rate of E4, but they are also high rate of E2. So it seems like if you go back to this uh, uh, rate, it's not that high uh, in compare all the other compared to the uh, South America. So this is an interesting perspective, just looking into FOE for frequency. And then the India is very rare. And if we and we have the Indian data set in our ADSP, it will be very curious. I'm kind of interested in looking into that. Uh, just the FOA genotype effect size. I think a lot of people just ignore that part because we already know <laughs> FOA. And but effect size is very different across different ancestry. And then I keep saying we need to look at protective mechanism as well as risk mechanism to inhibit risk mechanism and, and mimic protective mechanism. And so the our my research is more focused on protective mechanism and then we'll see what it comes together in later. So this is our, uh, uh, at least I'm involved in FOE related publication and we have a 16 uh, publication and it first one is a long time ago, 13 years ago. And so I'm going to cover this uh, some uh, uh, blue issue ones uh, today, but it's not much detail, just the, uh, 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 some uh, summary. And then some of them are, I superficially involved. For example, uh, the Raymond, oh, this is not, but the uh, Nature Medicine paper, I was, uh, 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 really minorly involved, but the others, most of them, are it's actually heavily involved. I invested, or I wrote the uh, paper, or the my students and uh, wrote the paper. So this will be the uh, full overview, and then I'm going to cover some of the early works as well as uh, our recent works. And so, what's the APOE itself impact? in the different ancestry. <clears throat> so the uh, for E44 and it's the Asian, and we know this is a, a really very high odds ratio compared to European ancestry, African ancestry. So African ancestry, this is actually African American. It's not African African. So African American, the E44 odds ratio compared to E33 is 
lot less than European and East Asian. So East Asian is the highest odds ratio. And there's some modifying effect in this paper actually uh, uh, reported, but we still don't know exactly why the East Asian is really high odds ratio for E44 compared to African American and lowest. And this is kind of, a, there's some different odds ratio values, but this is a, a generally believed right now. The African American, African ancestry has a low uh, effect size for the E4 and compared to East Asian and European. European is in the middle. And uh, we also look at the comparison is what about the uh, not just clinically confirmed AD, but clinically confirmed and neuropathologically com confirmed AD cases, which is kind of we only focus on 5,000 autopsy uh, cases. And then we know exactly this is clinically normal, clinically AD, as well as neuropathologically AD, neuropathologically uh, control. And if you're looking at this odds ratio, see, it's really even this is I'm talking about non Hispanic white, not East Asian, African American. So this indicates there's some uh, misclassification or what we keep talking about, this aspect may not be really true. It, it could something, uh, uh, some misclassification also involved because in here, E44, effect size is, is even uh, really high, okay? Compared to the clinically confirmed AD, it's twice higher. Uh, so we believe the neuropathologically confirmed AD uh, cases in control really kind of uh, cleaned uh, a lot of some uh, the other uh, aspect, which is dilute some effect size of A4. And we looked at also the effect of a block stage after accounting for the plug. Uh, the reason we accounted for plug score is plug score seems uh, uh, not much impact on uh, it, kind of a dose dependent impact uh, with E2. That's what we originally interested in. And then, but Tangle is really dose dependent impact uh, with the uh, uh, AD, with the Brock stage with E44. But once you, even if you account for the flux score, which is kind of independent, uh, effect on Brock stays uh, uh, involved. And this is also showing that the uh, uh, FOE genotype effect and then the compared to E44 was the p-value. And this is actually after adjusting for plot, this is effect size and all significant. So a lot of people, uh, also this is a little bit unique way of looking. We not just looking into E33 as a reference, and that's what everybody's doing. But you think about the, a lot of genetic study, we actually compare protective allele versus risk allele. What's the huge uh, effect size difference? But we never actually looking in a genotype in that way. So here we looked at actually E44, uh, E22, as our, here is E2, E44, and compared to all the other genotype, any protective effect of all the other FOE genotype. So we really use the uh, strong uh, E44 effect and compared. We also compared the 3-3, but uh, this included uh, uh, E22. Any questions, Sally? Yeah, I am sure. Uh, then, so this is uh, one of the uh, maximum studies show FOE is more related to amyloid beta, right? E4. E4. Yeah, 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 E4, yeah. So this is uh, how you're looking in, how you're, so this is E4 definitely uh, associated with the amyloid, but EPO, uh, the E4 is not directly associated with the Brock stage. So 
that's uh, that's the one is already published in pure AD uh, autopsy cases. I did not put it in reference. It's been known it E4 is associated with the amyloid, but not the tau. But E2 protective mechanism is associated with the both, protect against the tangle as well as the uh, plaque. But uh, that's why the data on E4, on APOE being showing increased expression in microglia becomes important because the microglia remove the tangles, remove the yeah. plaques. So something kind of a we. It's it's oh, not. Man. You said that uh, um, in microglia, E four remove tau or no. beta. So if you think of the trem two pathway, uh huh, yeah. Trem two, um, microglia, yeah. Then trem two rem removes a beta, with uh -huh. plaques, which is good, but it also gets rid of dying neurons, which is bad. So it's kind of a mixed bag, mm. um, but the APOE must be, I guess the current, many current ideas, but you know, that's why the current interest in, 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 you know, the, the inflammation generally. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I think the E4 is definitely very strong uh, association. Yeah. With but on the inflammation then, Depends on which stage. Early stage has more amyloid beta, late, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh pre stretch mutation, another protective uh mutation, and it's actually in the middle of here in this uh, LD RI binding region which is the O136 uh, mutation. And this one is protective against tangle. The reason is because if you're looking at the uh, presenelin mutation carriers, they should develop early onset AD. And this Christchurchy mutation carriers, and if you're looking at PLA, it's very high load of PLA in brain. But tau compared to the uh, negative Christchurch uh, non carriers, it's very less tau tangle. So, which indicate it's not, they are cognitively normal here, uh, Christchurch carriers compared to this is uh, uh, the uh, uh, early onset AD. And so, if you're looking at this data, and it seems like uh, not the plug actually Christchurch mutation is protective against. It's more tangled, uh, protect against uh, uh, AD, which is the that's what the, uh, this paper is actually concluded. And this kind of give you something, uh, um, similar theme, protective mechanism, APOE related protective mechanism maybe closely involved the uh, tau and tangle uh, pathway. So that's my initial um, conclusion. Can I ask a question? So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just a quick question. Um, mm -hmm. so, so you have the, you know, the APOE, you have the tau, but what about dementia? Does it correlate with dementia? Uh, so tangle, uh, I mean, better than Jesse or somebody, <laughs> clinician can tell me, uh, generally been known, the tangle uh, block stage is more correlated to uh, uh, cognitive uh, uh, impairment. Uh, also, but it's not saying that uh, uh, a plug is not. It's uh, more like uh, you think about other dementia without any plug, they also have a dementia. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why, but they all have a tangle. Formation CTE and uh, uh, the front temporal dementia, or types of other dementia. That's why, in generally, cognitive uh, dementia, uh, we call its cognitive function probably correlated with the tangle formation. But I, I, I cannot say that is a hundred percent true. They are all interconnected. The tangle I'm and the. I'm interested in, in vascular dementia. Yeah, that is so. All. I, I kind of have an open mind on what the cause is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it may not be just the tangle, but definitely not just the plot. That's what I can say. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, can go back. So, this uh, church, Christian church mutation is only in APOE3? That's what they found. This is the carrier, the Christian uh, uh, carriers. This is the case study. So, this is that's what they found. Background was FOE3. Uh uh three. FOE three three? Yeah. Yeah. That that's what they the the person they found the mutation, Christian mutation. And but the important thing is they screen this is a mutation, early on same mutation carrier. Okay, so they have a double mutation, right? So they have a pre one mutation, Chris Church mutation. So the pre one mutation carriers, they sh they supposed to develop early onset AD, but they didn't. That's why they did sequence every single one uh, gene. And then they found the Chris Church mutation. Yeah, that's how they found. Any Any other? So, and now the uh, APOE genotype dependent risk. Now we look at APOE allele specific effect, how it involved some uh, mutations, uh, that mutation involved the tangle or, or plug, and I haven't gone through. There are many, many, many other uh, uh, data out there. I'm just focusing on our papers. Uh, now we're interested in some transcriptome profiling and methylene profiling, genetic profiling. This is more like uh, APOE stratified. So we're looking separately if for carriers and if for non-carriers because our hypothesis is if for carriers, their genetic risk profiles are different from if non carriers because they didn't have it for, which is they are not supposed to, and in terms of just thinking about FOE, since they don't have it for, they are less the, uh, risk to develop AD, but they develop AD. Then what other factors impact on if for carrier, if for non carriers to develop AD? So that's the idea. And so we're looking at separately, risk of profile separately in if for carriers and non carriers. And so the first study, uh, Rebecca just graduated last year, and she did looking at transcriptome differences in each APOE stratified uh, data. And we found, we initially very interested in it to uh, uh, protect a mechanism. And we also look at E3 and E4. And, and we found the most interesting one is a complement pathway uh, genes as well as GFAP and MPNT. These are the top ranked E2 among E2 carriers to develop AD and or protect against develop AD. So that's what we found uh, probably uh, complement C4A, C4B involved the protective mechanism. So that's what uh, we first reported. It could be APOE protective mechanism linked to the classical complement pathway. And then we also look at network analysis and if it's two carriers and three, three all separately and AD control separately. And then one, uh, this E2 carriers network of genes, we found the very famous AD associated with associate gene with CR1. This is another complement uh, pathway gene. And then the C4A, C4B is all kind of a one uh, network, which is network means co-expressed gene network. They are highly correlated expression. This is a bulk RNA, it's not cell type specific. And then this is also associated with the PTAU231. Uh, and this indicate the uh, Known AD gene, including CR1, is co regulate with the complement. We just found the C4A, C4B. And then the expression of a C4A, C4B is also associated with, strongly associated with the PTAU231, almost uh, exclusively associated with the uh, PTAU231. And so complement passage is not new. 
and previously also reported in mass model. And they said the uh, FOE2 actually reduced. C1Q is uh, the uh, classical complement, the first uh, uh, molecule and in hippocampus. And they the, uh, reduced the expression of C1Q. And also the this is uh, uh, the Nature Medicine paper a couple of years ago. They also uh, found the APOE directly binding to the C1Q and modulate the uh, inflammation. Um, but not 100% uh, sure. You see our data show the C1Q is not strongly associated with the in human data. So I'm not really sure about this. But anyway, they this indicate the complement, classical complement cascade, especially C1Q, C4, C4B, which really involve the apoe related uh, uh, protective mechanism or risk mechanism. And uh, we also looking at methylation profiles in different apoe genotypes. And we're looking at if we carry as a non carrier separately as in brain as well as blood. We are under review right now. And uh, this is from brain or also blood. And to say you're not surprising to the most significant CPG side, this is the difference is not AD. So we are looking at if for carriers and non carriers, what differences in methylation profiles between if for carriers, non carriers, not AD versus control. And then we're also looking at AD among AD compared to the if for carriers, non carriers, what the methylation profile differences. And then the controls, what methylation difference profile. This is color, the uh, a pink is control. And here, and the uh, blue is AD and total is uh, green. And so you're looking at, this is a Framingham study of uh, blood and most significant to say, not surprisingly, we found FOE reason, CPG site in FOE reason compared to the IFO carriers, non-carriers. So methylation profiles is very significantly different between IFO carriers and non-carriers. And especially FOE gene and here, as well as we found the apple C1 and profile differences in blood. And so we kind of did not expect to see the uh, apple C1 profile difference if for carriers, non carriers. But we expect to see differences if for carriers, non carriers, very strong differences in apple gene reason. And so we got the seven genome significant FOE differentially methylated SPG site. And then the uh, one is located in TAM40. Its gene is, its CPG site is TAM40 in brain. We are talking of brain. And then two is in FOE. And then one is in, from blood, FOC1. It looks very complicated because it looks blood and brain profile different. And then the uh, genes, uh, uh, the difference is CPG site in, in the gene is different. So blood is FOC reason CPG site and brain TAM40 and FOE. So this is a little bit complications. And then we need to tease out what the cell type, I mean, the tissue specific, as well as what these three genes involved in, in some of apo related uh, of uh, uh, function in AD. And brain, is looking at since we got the TAM40 and FOE CPG site, this is FOE and TAM40 CPG site we just got here, two FOE and one uh, CPG, uh, one from the TAM40. And this three, and then we looked at uh, methylation CPG site associated with the expression of this gene and we looked at TAM4 is not associated any of CPG side is not associated any of expression in brain. Okay, so we expect to expect it to see something because it comes out from brain, but we didn't see anything about TAM40. And yeah. uh -huh. Alan Roses is turning over in his grave. <laughs> 
I I had another negative uh, report. Do you remember, Lindsay? <laughs> that uh, uh, length mutation. Yeah. But but I think I'm not dismissing comfort entirely. Something impact on something in in methylation, but not the expression uh, related to methylation. So the FOE to uh, uh, CPD side is associated with the uh, FOC1. In, if non-carriers, it's not associated with the FOE. This is another complication you we, think about. Yeah. I know, and I think in our, in our uh, 3D assembly work, we have a big signal for APOC, if I remember right. Is it the brain cell type? Uh, yeah. it, it, uh, I have to look and see which cell type it is. Yeah, something yeah. something going on with the uh, but you're looking at see differences if for carriers, non-carriers. So if you see the FOC one, it's all coming from non-carriers, not the if for carriers. So that's a complication. So you always have to think about what the FOE back gen genotype background impact on this experience. So these, yeah, these this APOC is showing up in these are E3 IPSCs. These are not E3. Oh, that makes sense then. Yeah. And I'm wondering what about methylation uh CPG site? This is associated with the this methylation with uh, this APOC one in E4 non-carriers. And so on the other hand, FOE is associated with only among E4 carriers. It's it probably makes sense an E4 uh this CPG side impact on expression of FOE with four carriers, which means increasing E4, right? Uh uh isoform. But not really sure how this uh, explain all this connections. So at least we can tell methylation in both FOE sites was associated with the FOE expression, but in only in E4 carriers. And uh, no significant time for the, I did not write down the FOC1. I need to write that. So FOC1 is associated with the FOE CPG site only among E4 non carriers. So this is also the interesting point to think about what FOE reason it intricate each other or in, in interaction each other, something uh, we need to really think about, not just the uh, uh, simply this is all FOE expression. We did not see a lot of strong evidence uh, among if or non carriers with the FOE expression. Uh, so, and now uh, it turns to the genetic part, which is uh, initially I was very interested in looking at what the genetic profile difference. Julia, I have a question. Yes, the one uh, before, uh, are you, this heat map, is it showing just association or? Mm -hmm. Association, what? association. Okay, thank you. Yeah, this is a better estimate. Carla is better estimate, asterisk is p-value. Okay, okay. Yeah. But you, you didn't figure out whether the CPG sites actually upregulate or downregulate. Oh, we have information. I didn't put it in. This is actually, oh, yeah, we have it. <laughs> no, I'm not I think this Carla indicate the upregulate. Yeah. So the red is upregulate and blue is downregulate. Oh, so this is showing the regulation of expression. Yeah. yeah. So you go back to this. This is a hyper methylated, right? FOE. So it's a positively correlated. You know what I'm saying? This is red. It's a positively hyper high high expression. And mm -hmm. right? And Tom 40, I don't have to say because it's not <laughs> significant. So it's a positively correlated hypermethylation increased expression of FOE in only here. FOC1, I mean. Uh, FOE2, FOE4 carriers also positively correlated, right? So that's the direction, yeah. And then if, if, we, sh if we had a TAM40, then it's a hypermethylated 
side uh, in eukaryotes, then it will be interesting, but we didn't see the uh, significance expression. So kind of hard to say what's going on. Okay, so now genetic, uh, this is a very uh, 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 long old <laughs> paper, but this is a kind of first paper people uh, uh, kind of pay, pay the attention in if for positive and negative different genetic profiles. So this is the first paper actually reported among if for non-carriers, uh, we got that MAPT locus is genome significant. And this is the SNP. It, this is a cancer L1 up, stream of up, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, of cancer L1. And so in the stage one, two, and it was only genome significant hit. And if you're looking at regional blood, this is it for non carriers, it's almost not significant. And if for, uh, I mean, carriers, if for non carriers, this is very significant if you're looking at this uh, forest blood. And we looked at expression. So this SNP is upstream. So this is interesting. When we published it 2015, this data was not available. <laughs> and then we actually kind of indirectly reported that some uh, correlated SNE is associated with the expression of something. But I look at the uh, GTEx right now, there's exact the SNP, this SNP, it's actually data is there. <laughs> so uh, I wish I had one that when I write the paper. So anyway, the cancer L1 map T, this G carriers, it's increasing in the brain cerebellum. So, but this is kind of a, a little bit um, interesting or I have to understand better or cell type specific level, but this G allele is actually protective against the AD, if or non carriers because its odds ratio is less than one. Uh, so I don't know how this expression profile link uh, to this protective mechanism among EFO non-carriers. So this is the first time uh, we reported the MAPT and cancer L1 locus associated with AD only among EFO non-carriers, not the carriers. So these non-carriers, this is a big mistake. <laughs> My Nalio was protective against AD and increased expression of MAPT and cancer L1. This is in brain. And so this is a 2015 uh, paper. And we did again, uh, among the E4 non-carriers, we only focus on E2 carriers because we, really focus on E2 related protective mechanism. And the most significant gene was a PP2CB and we report, oh, sorry, this is 2022. <laughs> My citation mistake, did I? Yeah, maybe I copied wrong. And this is a 2022, okay? We just reported last year. And PPP2CB was the most significant. This gene is, coding this catal catalytic domain of this PP2A enzyme, which this enzyme deposphorylate tau. So phosphorylation, phosphorylate tau, and deposphorylate tau. And then we look at the expression of this SNP and this A allele is increasing. This is in blood. Uh, the brain data was not available. So, it's very significant, which indicate this is e SNP in impact on the uh, this specific gene. And we actually followed up this in brain tissue and assays all the complement because we already know E2 related the mechanism is complement and we assayed, as I said, C1Q, which is already known. So we're interested to assay. And then C4A, C4B, this is got from the expression analysis. And then we did uh, two different uh, catalytic isoform domain. This is the CA and CB, and then A, beta, and tau. Just the E4 positive and negative difference. We only see A, beta 42, 
and PPP to CB was only significant difference between if or negative and positive. And we also looking at what this PP to CB is associated with any of this outcome. And PP to CB level is strongly associated with the PPP to CA, not surprising because they are uh, uh, isoform, uh, what's isozyme? Yeah, so it's a, it's a encoding same and uh, uh, catalytic unit. Uh, and C1Q, which is not significant at all in any of EPOE genotype. And interestingly, C4B is very strongly associated with PPP2CB, highly correlated, almost the same as PP2, PPP2CA. And one note that the ABERA42 level is significant associated with PP2CB only among 3, 4 which is kind of negatively correlated. So this is another interesting point. And uh, the other two is not much affected uh, by FOE genotype, but only a beta two is it for carriers only associated with, uh, uh, with PP2CB. So this was say a beta 42 and PP2CB level was significant difference between the four carriers, non-carriers, and PP2C level positively correlated with the PP2CA and 4B. So, which is, we believe something common theme going on, which is Tangle tau or phosphorylated tau level with a uh, complement pathway because PP2CB is also related to uh, uh, tau phosphorylation and C4B. Uh, complement pathway. This kind of seems now merging together, uh, connected. And we also did a co-culture with the uh, iPSC derived neuron and astrocyte. And then we see the significant correlation between C4B, AB expression. This is expression. This previous one is a protein level in brain tissue. This is now expression level uh, in co-culture uh, uh, media. Okay, so this is a highly correlated between C4B and PP2CB, and we confirm this one. And and the, the last, the most recent work, uh, I I just a uh, uh, comment on. We did look at if for carriers, non-carriers, and then we looked at if two carriers among the if for non-carriers. And we haven't looked at E4 for carriers, right? So we also look look for the protective uh, uh, variant, the protective factors among E4 for carriers. So this is a, a, a large ADGC cohort, but it's not that many um, if E2 carrier cases, about 1,000 or 1,500 uh, cases, and uh, out of uh, 40, 35,000, okay. So, and we got genome significant heat tribe too, and we tested all suggested variant, and then we highlighted two variant because it's a follow-up approach uh, has a strong evidence, additional evidence. I'm only showing just the example of tribe two, and it looks like uh, among C4 carrier, this is actually SNP is uh, uh, associated with the increasing uh, uh, G allele is actually increasing among carriers, E4 carriers. And this is consistent with the uh, uh, memory score, which is uh, protective. Increase is good, it's protective. And also gene expression is E2 is increased, which is also the higher level, it seems good, uh, because we believe E2 2 is uh, good <laughs> and E4 4 is uh, uh, bad. So it's a low level is bad. So protective allele increased tribe two expression in brain tissue only among E4 carriers. And protective allele also performance in memory, improved memory performance, which is protection against the memory. And the I astrocyte A neuron actually carrying it to genotype increased. Uh, this is a very consistent story. So this is all uh, uh, we covered and then just a uh, big uh, uh, summary is just the E2 protecting mechanism may be linked to classical complement pathway. That's what 
seems consistent. And I did not mention the tangle formation. Uh, also, it's also part of this story. And pr present, there's a very distinct transcriptional and methylation signature in the for carriers, non carriers. And then protective mechanism related to FCOE2 also involved the phosphorylation of tau. Uh, and E4 for protective, now we're talking about E4 for carriers do not develop AD, their mechanism seems very different from E2 protective mechanism. That's the uh, uh, what we found. And so future, we're interested in genetic predictor and we try to identify cross ancestry, what different uh, these profiles across ancestry. That's what I'm trying to do. And then omics oh, signature, which is transcriptome, metylome, and proteome. We're also trying to profile FOE genotype related uh, differences in blood and brain. And then we are also interested in biomarker, FOE related biomarker, and mostly in plasma. And also outcome, uh, neuropathological outcome, how impact on this protective mechanism. And then we are very interested in the validation of uh, uh, using human IPC. So this is part of our uh, approach our parallel pursuit on U19 and brain aging, uh, framing and study brain aging program. So that's why I'm kind of summarizing where we are now. Okay, so this is it for me. <laughs> All right, thanks, Gianga. Uh, we'll open up the floor to questions and comments. Um, yeah. Young guy, I know I can't find it. I've been looking for it, but I, in some of our transcriptomic studies, we have C1Q and C, you know the C1Q uh -huh. and C4 showing up all over the place. I just forget which one, which of the multiple studies I'm doing. So I'll be <laughs> I'll be searching out for that. But in something, it just shows up like crazy. Can so you tell me? Yeah. Time. So, we saw this one in estrus. I'm curious, it's showing up in microglia. How strong in microglia? And uh, there's I'm oligodendrocyte. Okay. It's very, I, I'm actually hypothesizing oligodendrocyte is very important in the C4A and FOE function, but we don't have any data about oligodendrocyte. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't, I can't inform on that, although. Ella Zeldrich, now that I'm in anatomy and neurobiology, Ella Zeldrich works a lot on oligos and so might be able to. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious, oligo. What's it? It's something I read in the mouse model. Uh, the complement, especially C4, is very related to this uh, oligodendrocyte dendrite kind of uh, uh, outgrowth or, or, or something like that. So uh, there's some knockout mouse model actually showing that, cool. but not in human. I I don't have any any data in human. Hi, Yana. This is a very nice talk. Thank you. Hi, thanks. Yeah. yeah. So I was wondering. So you're seeing a lot of differences between looking at APOE two versus APOE four. Do you think that there's actually more than one genetic disorder associated with APOE? Or are we just not looking at maybe enough samples to come up with a comprehensive mechanism that includes all of the APOE spectrum from E2 to E4? Yeah, so I think I, I, I thought about, we can think about kind of a different layers. So just the FOE itself, FOE reason, kind of a couple of genes, a highly linked FOE. And then you think about E2 and E4, it's not directly mirror. They are doing something different mechanism. If, for example, E4, I already told strongly associated with the uh, uh, PLA, but E2 is protective, associated with the protective against the both plug and tangle, and then now complement. And so the E4 has so strong an impact on the PLA, maybe the others is not even 
come up or not even showing any any other functions or associations. That's one portion I agree. We really need to kind of think about some independently if for for impact and E2 mechanism may be different. And then third part is also what about the genetic profiles non carrying E4? They have some different uh, profiles going on, a transcriptome, all the uh, other kinds of profiles, genotype background dependent. So this is also another thing we need to pay attention. What background are you talking about in, in FOE? They may have a very different profile. We see the very different profiles if for carriers, non-carriers. And so that also uh, think about when you studying what background you you studying maybe uh, that is also important. So I do agree. We I do think we need to go back to the, our basic lesson. What if for it to and that FOE itself and that reason that's one focus and the other one is additional some modifiers and uh, other. Uh, Profiles that impact on on top of genetic epigenetic background. Great, yeah. thanks. Yeah. yeah, I was I was wondering too. So maybe maybe this is in your data too, and I'm just not catching this. But obviously, a lot of E3 carriers who don't even have E4 get Alzheimer's as well. What what yeah. can you discriminate out of that group? Like that, just within the E3s, not even looking at E4s. If you just look at E3s and compare. The that's end. exactly <laughs> that's this the uh, one. So okay. this info non carriers included E2 and 3. I see. So this one, you see the just the looking at genes that came up very different, right? Yeah, so yeah. I mean, obviously, FOE is uh, you know, this that's why I'm saying cancer L1 map T has never been reported associated with the later on said AD. This is the first time only among for non-carriers. Not if you merge it together, combine together, the signal is gone. We cannot see. So and you're looking at the genes in if for positive, it's not coming up if for negative. So this indicates very distinct genetic profiles going on associated with AD. So uh which is uh, uh which is I think it's it's very important to note uh very different AD type different types of AD we are talking. If for carriers AD, if for non-carriers AD, I think I don't know anybody actually any functional comparison, but my hypothesis their how to get the AD is totally different. Right. For yeah, uh, Gianna's hypothesis, as APOE local haplotype around their regions are so different, and it is unique for APOE4 carriers. So, definitely the genetic influence from E4 carrier versus non carrier will be very different. And if we separate out the genetic analysis for E4 carrier versus non carrier, their signature will be very different. And even so, in my study, um, APOE4 carrier and versus APOE non-carrier, their transcriptome changes are very different. Yeah. So, I believe, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. Something really we need to really think a couple. Well, of there, there are there are a couple other things to to be con, you know observations and other things to be considered. So, just looking at the screen here, mm -hmm. you see the association with cancel L1 and tau, and it's the tau region, mm -hmm. only emerges when you look at the non-E4 carriers. Um, and that suggests that E4 itself is not a driver of uh, tau pathology. Um, yeah. And that doesn't mean it, it doesn't contribute to it, but it's not it's not the driver and the reason we may That's not why I, I, I didn't say you said <laughs> I didn't I like to say but you know I didn't say well I, I what I all I'm saying is is that the 
reason the association was not detected before is that the E4 in, the, in a sample can cloud whatever is contributing to the action of uh, MAP-T. So it, it could be independent. And, and the other point is, is when you talk about what's going on that's different between E3, 3 or E4 individuals, um, yes, E3, 3 folks do get AD quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Most of the people in the world, you know, most of the people in the world probably who get AD, a high portion of them at least are three three, suggesting what yeah. we already know that there are other factors, including many genetic ones, that contribute to the disease. But I think, Uwe, the question you're asking, or you may not have asked, but <laughs> what it implies is the disease any different right um mm -hmm. you know uh, 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 clinically probably not but in terms of the pathway to get there probably yes things seems different and even you know i really want to see work with the toro just looking neuropathological characteristic of of ad's of this uh, uh, FOE genotype. So that's another thing. It's just uh, very basic, but seems surprisingly mm -hmm. unknown. And that's what I'm kind oh. of sometimes bothered. Yeah. One one other comment, Gionga. I'm just staring at the slide on the screen. Uh -huh. And going to the far right, the uh, strategy of mm -hmm. doing something with E2. There are no human clinical trials that I'm aware of. But there is a lot of work um, that I've become more familiar with, uh, thanks to a committee that both Julia and I sit on. There's a lot of work, for example, on E2 uh, biology and potential therapeutics going on in mouse models by, oh, really? our, oh, by, oh. by, our, by our friend and neighbor across town, uh, Brad Hyman. So, um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, right. So I, I, I wasn't that for, I only recently became much more familiar with it. Um, so we need to, we need to hurry up. <laughs> I share the one of my program that we are working on is that, you know, uh -huh. carrier is difficult to collect, but yes. And time to actually finally have enough number of E2 carrier have carry the same haplotype, so non isogenics studies. Mm. So, oh, paper we did for E4 versus E3 in population, we are working on E2 as well in human in multiple brain cell types. So that would be very interesting. I'm so curious, just uh, scientifically. I mean, this uh, we need to go back to the, our basics understanding it for you. Uh, gene itself and that locus. Okay. And uh, I just want to give, is there an opportunity to others here to ask questions or offer commentary? I actually have a one comment. Just about the, the gene that you found in E2, the, the almost the last slide of TR something. Uh, TRB1, yes. E44 carrier, yeah, TRB1. Right. This gene that if you look at the next slide, actually you show it in IPS model. Um, but so it's interesting that this gene in human, it's not specific, it's not expressed in microglia, but the rest of cell type. Oh, really? Oh, not expressed in microglia. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So this is really genotype dependent, right? Right. Yeah, so this gene is uh, definitely apoe genotype dependent. And then the really working in only if for carriers, protective mechanism only in if for carriers. It's a little bit if a negative, maybe, maybe true. And yeah, we need the more sample size, but this is not a small sample size. This is 600 rosemary. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe this is a good point for me to chime in. This is for the benefit of Julia and Ben, who dropped off, and Gianga, and maybe a couple others. 
Uh, I just got from Alvin uh, a table that I'll forward to you with oh. all the numbers of subjects for whom we've got cryobank samples or PBMCs according to uh, sex, ethnicity, and APOE genotype. Great. Yeah. So I will, I will forward that table along. So uh, thanks to uh, Nancy Hurd Costa who, who who made this happen for us. So right. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Well, we've reached the top of the hour. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Mm -hmm. um, very and again, thank you, Gianga, for your. Uh, wonderful presentation. It spurred a, a lot of interesting discussion. Um, and wishing you all a great rest of your day, even though it's only hump day. It's only <laughs> Wednesday. So yeah. Take care, everybody. Okay. Thank you. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.